Hello, everybody, and welcome to our fourth Grow eBook. Today, we're talking garden trends, what we're seeing for 2014. And I want to welcome you all. I see some faces that I are familiar. Alyssa from Rescue, Justin from Garden Media Group, and a newcomer whom I don't know. Emma, you, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miriam from Home Talk. Hey, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Hi. She was talking about how she had met you down at, in Atlanta. Yeah, can I just say, I didn't realize this was, I thought it was a public hangout that we were watching. I didn't realize that we'd be on it, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah. So this is our fourth Google Hangout, and it's kind of, um, this one's going to be a free-for-all discussion, or we're calling free range and to discuss what we're seeing in terms of garden trends for 2014. And just to give you a quick little background about the way we do our garden trends, particularly Miriam, since you don't know us, is we, we look at uh, what is popping up on our horizon throughout the whole year and what looks like is going to be uh, very popular in years to come. So we're not really talking about you know what's hot right now, like chickens, but what do we think is going to be hot two, three years down the road? So what I'd like to do is just make this an open discussion. Is that Kathy Jens? No. Who's this at the far end? I can't see these little... Um... All right. So that would be a great idea, Emma. Emma is right here. Emma, kind of stick your head in. If so you put your I'm... mouse over her, her, her <laughs> picture, her name will pop up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So down here we have oh Eileen Perez. I don't know oh there's there's Stacy. Eileen, you're new. I don't think we know you. Can you tell us? So we're just gonna gonna go down the row. If everybody will just introduce themselves and then we'll uh, get started just chatting about trends. I see you, Stacy. <laughs> so Eileen, can you hear us? She's muted. I mean. I the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there's a little microphone. Yes. Can you hear us at all? Yes. Eileen Bird is in the... Can you oh, Eileen. Hi. She goes, oh, Eileen's from Costa Farms. Okay. I must know you then. Okay, and next to Eileen is Alyssa. Hello. And Alyssa's from Rescue, who makes the wonderful ornamental, uh, the new ornamental track. And then we have our good buddy next to her, Justin. Justin Hancock, you may know, uh, is now at Pastor Farms as their plant guru. And then over here we have Megan and Kate. And somewhere, it's Stacy in that picture. Where'd Stacy go? Come back over here, Stacy. And there's Stacy. <laughs> And we have Miriam. Hi, everybody. Good. So we're so glad y'all joined us today. And uh, you know, some of the trends that, that we're seeing were in our trends report. And the ones that pop out for us right now that are really big for over the horizon are young men uh, gardening more and in the garden. And I'm just curious what, what y'all are seeing out there. I mean, this is, we're just going to chat today. So, Marion, you're at Home Talk, and tell us, what, what are y'all seeing? You're, you're all over the place. So, first of all, I just have to say that I'm not prepared. <laughs> I thought I would be watching, not participating, but, and then also, right here by my desk, look what I have. So, like, ah, I'm actually looking at, stuff. yeah, because Stacy, who I met at the conference, gave me this, and I found it very interesting. But as far as what we're seeing on Home Talk, I mean, without getting into, you know, the, obviously people now are preparing for the winter, so it's fall gardening, right? But um, with the fall, there comes a lot of fall decor. And so um, just combining fall decor in the garden, we're seeing a ton of that. And the way that people are incorporating different outdoor decorations with like you know their pumpkins and the mums and the, all of that. that. Those are basically the pictures that we're seeing on Home Talk right now and the things that people are interested in 
in, in um, you know, consuming and sharing as well. Right. So one of the trends that we had seen probably 10 years ago that kind of uh, declined for a while was decorating outdoors. So we really are seeing a big interest again now that the economy has gotten better with people uh, decorating their yards and being interested more as much, maybe even more, in the outdoor decor as they are in the plants. So you're probably seeing a lot of that with um, posts, posts on your site. Yeah, a ton of it. In fact, I just um, posted, I featured on our Facebook page one of the most popular um, outdoor posts. Um, and I just want to show you guys this real quick because it's absolutely oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank goodness I've done a few hangouts, so I know what I'm doing. Oh, good. Um, here, this is like, this is the type of thing that we're seeing. Okay, how do you click on it to make it bigger? Oh, hmm. There you go. Oh, there we go. There you go. Whoops. Okay, so again. like these fall oh, wow. displays, isn't that gorgeous? That is. So I think, and this is like, a, you know, especially in the beginning of the fall, once further down the line, you know, at the end of the month or a few months from now, people are going to get so sick of this, but right now it's, it's very fresh. Yes. And one of the things, we just had our 25th anniversary party yesterday, and we used a lot of um, kind of blue-gray turquoise pumpkin and a lot of gourds that were funky looking. And I think that people are, you know, certainly still using their orange pumpkins, but there's so many more choices now. The white pumpkins, the, uh, the blue gray, the turquoise. So it really was unusual to see all the different colors. I thought that was nice. So Justin, what are you seeing down there at Costa Farms with the, uh, we also, let me tell you, we put, oh, and let me show you what we got for a, um, do you recognize this? Woo. Lucky Bamboo. <laughs> Lucky Bamboo. It's a Costa Farms Lucky Bamboo. One of our, one of our guests uh, brought us this as an anniversary present. They had no idea it was Costa Farms. So. I shot this off the bar this morning. Now, what are y'all seeing, Justin, as uh, trends in indoor or perennials? Well, down. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Hi, Kyle. Do I need to increase my sound? Um, down, down here we're going to be like, there's a tropical one, and then we have a big, old, tropical one, and then we have a big, old, tropical one. So, Jess, you're not having a lot of it, but I know I heard big, bold, tropical foliage plants. And I think that in that decorating, the whole decorating sense of decorating the outdoor environment and making it tropical oasis, one of the easiest ways to do that is with, with tropical plants. Yes. It's, you know, it's, always, it's been boom without the bloom. And um, I think that's the, that we have seen as a good trend. So, Alyssa. Yes. Well, while we're talking about decorating the outdoors, while we're outside, Marion, and all of this um, outdoor decorating, all these, these beautiful picnics we're having, uh, Alyssa, y'all have been, what trends have y'all been seeing? In, let me just walk down the top. I noticed in the trends of what you talked about, people are growing food now, and the composting is doing more with that. What that does is that brings out more insects. People are going to be more notice. They're not going to be noticing them more. Can you hear me okay? We're getting a lot of feedback. Mary and yeah. Mirafo at this. What do you think all this feedback is being caused by? Can you hear me? We can hear you fine. Okay. The best thing to do is if everyone mutes while, like, you, you can, you stay on, right, um, Susan, but if everyone else mutes when they're not talking because there's feedback from there's so many people, who knows where it's coming from, and also make sure you don't have two windows open because if you have two windows open or if there are two hangouts playing in the same room, that's where the feedback is coming from. Ah. Ah, it was, yeah. 
There you go. Whoever just muted, that's who it was. So just to, if you keep yourselves mute when you're not talking, we'll be good. Good, 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 good. So, um, so what do y'all? I tell you, I want to throw this question out because we've been get being we're being interviewed frequently right now about the garden trends, and in the garden trends report, we there are always yeah. You know, for every trend, there's always an anti-trend. But one of the trends that we saw with the U.S. Department of Agriculture did a, does a census on horticultural businesses. Horticulture, horticulture is not agriculture, it's ornamental plants that are being grown for um, garden use. And in that are vegetable plants. And the USDA said that vegetable gardening was down more than about 4.5% in 2012. So this, of course, has raised a lot of questions with people um, because vegetable gardening right now is so hot. Uh, what do you, but one of the things that we look at when we do our trends are where are some shifts? You know, where just even if there are slight shifts, where are those? And I just want to throw out throw it out to you all. What do you think? What are you seeing? What are you feeling intuitively about where vegetable gardening is going? And whoever wants to take that should unmute themselves. I think vegetable gardening is is becoming more and more popular, um, especially with that, that younger set. And like you talked about earlier in the, the talk, um, young men, um, especially as it ties to grilling. You know, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Okay. So it, it, it ties in, in really well with that crowd. Um, and also the the new moms, mm -hmm. you know, it's I'm seeing it um, pull more and more and more into the mindset of I can control what my children are eating, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really catching on there and filtering up the gardening continuum, which is interesting because usually it goes the other way around. It's the hardcore gardeners who are doing it, and it makes its way down. Well, we saw that. Thank you. In 2005, when we first saw this, this little shift, young men 18 to 34 were vegetable gardening as much as their grandfathers in the same demographic. And it was exactly for what you say, Justin, they were, they were cooking. And they were watching the food chefs on television who were talking about, you know, picking the herbs out of their um, own uh, herb gardens and their own fresh vegetables. The other thing that we're hearing about young men is that they are growing hops so that they can brew their own specialty beer and we've heard from a couple of people that the uh, universities that are offering not just universities but any place where they have classes on beer making that they are selling out within 24 hours so I think I think this is an area where people are very interested in doing specialty we, we call them in our um, trends report the superfoods uh, the and the fermentation gardens, uh, growing your own uh, grapes for your own wine, uh, growing, uh, making your own uh, kimchi, making shrubs, which you know are macerated vegetables, uh, berries with vinegar in it. So I think a lot of that's happening in a in a different way. So, so what about anybody else? else? What are you seeing, Mary? Are you seeing a lot of posts on your site for Yes, going absolutely. On? We actually, you know, this in the spring we uh, we released um, some information about like a record number of homeowners that were starting their own vegetable gardens in the spring. That was of course then a few months ago. But one of the um, things that we attributed it to is the rise of just information that's accessible to homeowners on how to grow gardens and you know in social media with home talk for sure I mean if in the past where you know a, a gardener would learn by you know just learn on his own year after year and learn from his mistakes and now the new homeowners are given the confidence to go in there and you know eat what they grow because they have the information that they need from others that share their experience and we see it on home talk all the time you have the more experienced gardeners sharing their you know their uh, techniques and then you have like the homeowners come and say look at this you know vegetable garden that I just started and ask them questions if they need help yeah so that's one of the main reasons and you know that uh, leads us to another trend that we saw and this again was just one of those tiny little paradigm shifts where it used to be that you got your 
gardening information first and foremost from your friends and your neighbors. Well, according to garden writers, that particular line item has dropped about 18 percent and the new friend of the gardener is the internet and people are getting their information from websites, from Twitter, from YouTube um, and Pinterest wasn't even on the radar at that point uh, and I think Pinterest is now really also giving a lot of inspiration as well as information and I think you're exactly right Mary and people are not intimidated now to go on Google and search for a question whereas walking into a garden center and saying gosh I don't know how to grow a tomato is right. you know intimidating that's you don't want to feel foolish yeah and, and and also on the flip side there was also something else that was very interesting that because the rising prices of food crops and concerns about food safety so they have more of the motivation to they have a very strong reason to do it Right. So, you know, um, I, I could tell you myself personally, I'm embarrassed to admit, but I didn't really understand much about organic produce up until a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And now I eat organic just because I, I learned this information online. So that if I... Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So if I, if I had, I live in a high rise building, so I can't garden, but if I could, I absolutely would, knowing what I know now. So, um, uh, beg pardon? Kate, you come from a background, Kate comes from a, a food background and was very involved in the slow food movement in New Mexico. So, where, what, were you, what are you seeing in terms of backyard gardening? And, and I think, well, first of all, New Mexico um, there's a lot that hasn't changed in New Mexico in the last hundred years, so we were really in the thick of, um, you know, backyard agriculture, uh, farms. It's still a very agrarian society, but I was also involved with edible communities, and so we were kind of on the cusp, or the, you know, on that the the front part of that wave in bringing all of this information around. Uh, food, local food, growing your own food, connecting with local farmers. We were really, you know, on the front of that wave. And so I think that there's a ton of information out there. Those statistics by the USDA, I'm wondering where you get those statistics from because I feel like there's been a surge in people, you know, in interest in growing your own food, in, you know, backyard farming, whether it's, whether, you know, it's young men growing hops, whatever it is. Um, there's been a huge surge in the last five years, and there's so much more information available. So I'm curious. I, I'm still trying to scratching my head, wondering where those stats came from. Um, but there's also more availability um, and access to seeds. You know, in New Mexico, I think four or five times a year there were seed swaps. And at one of those seed swaps in Dixon, New Mexico, a tiny little town in New Mexico, there were three or 4,000 people at a seed swap. So these are not people that are buying online. Um, you know, they're they're trading seeds with each other. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, there are a lot of access to things like Seed Savers Exchange. A lot more mm -hmm. interest in heirloom seeds. In so it's you know people aren't necessarily buying from the burpees or again you know where those numbers came from, where those stats came from. Mm -hmm. I I that doesn't ring true for me. You know, one of the while I have you, Kate. One of the trends that we um, are we're seeing is this: uh, the new recycling uh, movement is going to be composting food scraps. And I don't know if well, you're shaking your head, Alyssa. You you live in a, weren't you? Yeah, you live in a market where um, is it has it been um, regulated yet? Is it mandatory yet in Spokane that you? Uh, Recycling your food scraps. I know it is in Portland, and I don't know if it is in Seattle. It's it's mandatory in Seattle as well. Spokane is not mandatory. It's encouraged. Uh, we're all given the bins to use at curbside for the composting. But no, it's not. Um, I would say in our area, it's not necessarily widespread, but in the Northwest, it is, and it, it is. is. So right now, you've got a bin for your plastics, paper, glass, and then food scraps. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's food scraps and yard waste together. Food scraps and yard waste together. 
So I was surprised when we were looking at this trend um, that now 25% uh, of people compost. Hey, Dean Nash. I don't know. Dee, did you meet Miriam when you were down at um, the Garden Bloggers Conference? I don't know if Dee can hear us yet. I think She's you're muted, Dee. Muted. So I think you might be muted. But um, so we started looking into this composting uh, issue, and it's amazing what percentage of food scraps go to our uh, landfills. And so the battle cry that we're hearing is, you know, make landscapes, not landfills. So one of the issues, though, is is how do you educate people about? You know, I'm embarrassed to say, Miriam, I've been having, I've had a compost pile for years, but I didn't understand the ratio of brown to green and, um, you know, had, that you really, uh, how to make it really work. I I just have been um, putting my food scraps right into my compost pile and then dumping some leaves on it and, and then trying to figure out what to do with it. So <laughs> I see you're laughing, Alyssa. Do you do the same thing? <laughs> Uh, my mom used to compost, and she had the big tumbler bin and really got into it until they lived in an area with wild animals, and that's yes. what she, she learned more was the right mix to not attract the wild animals and kind of gave up on it. I'm not, I'm not trying to naysay composting. I'm just saying that in certain areas, especially I think in the Northwest, you have bears and other animals that will go after your food waste, and you have to kind of contain that and do that right. And so I'm sorry, I was giggling about the whole having the right mix and just tossing some leaves on it. My mom did that and then learned the hard way. Right, yeah. So, uh, Dee, you're a good organic gardener. How do you do? And you live in that red clay area. I, I'm, I'm guessing you're a composter. Uh, I Am I on? Can you guys hear you're me? You're on. You're on, girl. Yay, I finally got here. Um, what did you ask me? How do I garden organically? How do you, do you compost? Oh, how do I compost? I do pretty much the same thing. I'm a slow composter. I don't try to do the fast, hot method because I'm using it just for extra matter. So I do green, brown, green, brown, but I don't turn it over as much as you should. No, I don't either. Um, you know, it's all going to rot. I mean, Cassandra Diaz said that. It's all going to rot, so you just don't have to worry about it so much. No meat, no dairy. No meat, no, no dairy. Fat. Right. Right. Did... Dee, did you get a green cycler from us? No, I haven't ever gotten one. I have a tumbler, but I don't have a green cycler. Well, I just want to do, I know this is a this is a commercial, but can y'all see this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is um, a new product that with this compost in mind, this is a product that we're very excited about now, and you put your green waste in here, and then it goes into, can y'all see those blades? This is kind of hard to show. Yes. Anyway, and then you crank this crank, and it shreds. And I keep this, I know people, don't, I know I don't look like a green a composter, but I keep this right in my kitchen sink. And in the morning, I go out and I pick dandelions, and then I have my kale and my carrots and my beets and my mango and blueberries. And I, I make my smoothie in the morning. I throw this stuff right in there, and at night, and then I take it out and throw it in my garden and it chops it and shreds it and then it composts ten times faster. Dee, I, I thought for sure, and Mary, we'll get all of y'all one, anybody that wants one, uh, so y'all can no, test them out. Great. Yeah, you'd love it. It shreds it up just for, the right, just for the right size of all those earthworms to you know, munch it up and turn it into earthworm goody, goldies. That's, that's really cool. And you know, I juice every morning. I do the green juice blend with kale and cucumbers and you know, it's it valuable material. <laughs> it is valuable material. And um well that's what we're also seeing, Miriam, is one of the big trends is that people are drinking their garden now. And not just making cocktails, but mm -hmm. drinking their garden exactly the way I do the same thing and I feel I feel like it's got my day off to a great start. Right. I, don't you? I feel hundred percent. It's I feel very self righteous. It's it's wonderful. Everyone here listening, you guys should do it. It's so good. And uh, dandelions, you know, we, we talk about superfoods in our uh, trends report, 
uh, dandelions is certainly uh, one of them, but golly, Moses, okay, I have to, um, the blueberries, uh, we're growing uh, right here at our office, I'm growing at home, uh, blueberries in my, in my own garden now, and the research on blueberries, not just for antioxidants, but for breast cancer, for Alzheimer's, for level, you know, controlling your insulin for diabetes, it's just, I don't, we don't go without blueberries in our house. What are you, Dee's drinking a super drink, I can tell. <laughs> I'm having tea. Oh, good, super tea. Mm -hmm. do, do you put lavender in your tea? I have never put lavender in my tea. I just put lemon balm sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dee, what kind of trends are you seeing these days? Um, I was really listening to what you guys were talking about, about the younger gardeners and vegetable gardening. That's that book that I'm writing, and I'm so excited to hear it's still a trend. I hope it's still a trend next year. Um, Stacy, tell us you're writing. Tell us what the name of your book is. It's called The 2030-something Garden Guide. That's perfect. Did you catch that? Yep, 2030-something Garden Guide. Mm-hmm. So what and is... And, of course, it has a long subtitle because they all do now. So what's different about a 20 or 30-something gardener? Well, just like you all were saying, they didn't learn it from their next-door neighbor. I mean, let's face it, most 20, 30-somethings grew up in daycare, and so maybe their grandparents weren't as much in their lives as my grandparents were, and so they didn't get to toddle behind them and, as much. So I think, you know, we have to approach them differently. And they're they're big into technology. That's the other thing that we're hearing about. They're very big on technology. Yeah, very big yeah. into technology, which I think is one of the things that our whole trends report this year was on finding balance in your life, and that part of the place you find that balance is in the garden. And I think I don't know about y'all, but I think as a, as connected as we are to technology, as connected as I am, there are times now that I'm saying, "Oh man, I've got to leave my phone behind." I, you know, I'm not putting this on Facebook. I want my, mm -hmm. I want some privacy in my life back again. So I think that finding that in the garden is just, you know, I look at gardening now as a, a Zen opportunity. It's a time to go out and do some meditation, um, do some. I'm not gonna go as far as say I'm doing down dogs yoga in the garden, but you know, when I weed. I'm not Bending over and touching my toes, you know, that's kind of what I'm pretending to do and not just weeding. And I really did, for the first time in my life, have a quiet mind this year while I was out weeding. I have a question for Dee. Um, Dee, when you're researching your book, are you noticing that there are more younger men in the garden? I mean, do you have a target, a target that you're talking to in this book? You know, actually, I'm seeing more younger women. I think the men are really good about getting out there and finding the technology online and just, you know, they love that DIY thing and they just go and look at YouTube and then they go do it. Um, but I'm seeing more young women. And I just went to a big bloggers conference and I sat with a lot of young bloggers in that age group and they were so excited. In fact, they were really excited, so excited I was surprised because they said, we don't know how to do it. And you know, a lot of them are married now, or they have small children, or both. And so it's it's a different, they just, they don't have the tools. And I, I, and I think that's a big problem, is not is the know-how. But it's also that, as you said, that enthusiasm, that excitement for growing your own, and then serving it. And serving it to people, and, and having that pride in saying, I grew this myself, and then there's that mystique around, you know, that you've grown it yourself. So I think that. Oh, still, I think. So. I think women are still going to be the driving force because we we are the cooks and we're the caretakers. Um, but it's great to see. I know at Terrain, our local, you know, our, our Groovy Garden Center here, you go there and you see a lot of young couples with baby strollers together shopping at the garden center. Well, that's awesome. I mean, and I and I really, I'm just. I, I guess I wasn't thinking about just specifically men or women. I was just thinking about twenty somethings. So I've just met more women. So, right. so what? I have this great weather sticker that says, "Love people, cook them tasty food." But you grew yourself. <laughs> yeah, but you grew yourself. Right. 
So yeah. what else do you else? Oh, you've got it. Love yeah, people cooking right, tasty it's on, food. Yeah, it's on my uh, idea board. Um, so the tasty food, that's a good one. So what else are y'all seeing there? We have a few more minutes. I think you guys did a good job of talking about it. I mean, the parts about how we're too tech. I mean, I get so tired of thinking about SEO and all the things I have to do to promote the blog or to promote the message that I'm trying to get out. And so I see gardening as a respite. It is. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I have something, and I don't have anything to back this up, but I think that there's a lot of uh, re more respect and admiration for the gardening community as a whole out there because with the information that's getting out, people are starting to respect gardeners and what they do a lot more. And then also on the flip side, the sense of community between gardeners now that they have the online outlet where they can share, that's growing even stronger and it's becoming like this collective force. So this is just my, you know, I this is what I do all day with Home Talk and, you know, with the various groups that I'm in. And I'm, I'm on the outside a little bit because I'm not a gardener, um, although I would love to be, but it struck me from the beginning how, what a, what a wonderful, passionate community gardeners are, and then it just seems to be growing. And I was at the Garden Bloggers Conference, and Dee, I didn't meet you there, and I wish I had. I saw you on the Twitter stream the whole time. <laughs> so now, do you think it's becoming uh, cool? Yes. Yeah. It's so cool. Like, having the knowledge is cool. And I really, that's, that's a good word for it. It's just cool. Well, that, that's good because for a while it was, um, you know, you th thought of gardening when I, we first started doing uh, gardening PR probably 15 or 20 years ago. You would say gardener, and you were talking about a woman much older than I am, gray hair, garden club, white gloves, and um, it was not a hip or cool thing to do. Right. Yeah, I think the online community has really, I mean, I'm a member of several garden clubs here locally. But I think the online community has replaced it, especially where young people are concerned. And like, and I'm so sorry we didn't get to meet at the conference. I wish we had, because we talk all the time on Twitter, and we're always on Garden Chat. And I think Garden Chat's been a great resource for us all to get together on Mondays and talk about a specific topic. There are other chats too, of course, too. There are the chats, but I think Garden Chat definitely has helped. You know, it's fun to meet people that you. It just has built a community of people that sometimes you never even see. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, we've been working a long time here at this office to try to make gardening fashionable and cool again. So um, I'm glad to hear that it is. Uh, any Anything else y'all want to talk about before we wrap up here? Could I add on to uh, Miriam's statement about okay. how it's becoming more cool now? Um, when I was in the Chicago area recently, the... Uh, I talked to some community gardeners and now all these young people are going into these community gardens and it's it's not just having your garden, I mean that's, that's the fun part, but you're also meeting everyone. It all seems like the new bar scene, if you will, or another oh, place wow. where people are actually being social and coming out to garden. And I think that's also another piece. It's not the tech savvy side, and they're not online, but I think that they are really meeting new people and appreciating the community garden for that piece. <coughs> Yeah, it's it's really cool here, and I'm in New York City. So many community gardens, and it's it's the cool thing to do nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful, cool thing to do, right? And a good thing for you. You know, I mean, because there's so many benefits to plants besides just being tasty. You know, they it's they're stress reducing. They you know help clean the air. You know, not just it's not just vegetable plants; it's all plants, um, and that's a message we really all need to work to get out of the, the many benefits of plants. That you know, the Costa has a great website, O2 for You. Uh, it's about the you know the benefits of plants from everything from cleaning the air to reducing ADD. I mean, it's amazing, and it's just the beauty. Yeah, you know, we forget that we really are in the in the beauty business. We're not in the business of plants. We're in the beauty business, and we're in the business of helping people to feel better about themselves and their lives and finding balance. Well, great. So I think this will be a wrap for us for, for, um, 
for this ebook session. We really appreciate appreciate y'all participating, and we'll have one in October on on media relations. Although I think that might be, I think that's uh, Halloween. So we all may have to dress up for that one and wear costumes. <laughs> so we're going to be doing media relations at the end of uh, October, and we'll have our ebook out. And for the whole month of October, we'll be talking about media relations. And we would welcome any guest bloggers that want to talk about how you like to be related with. <laughs> so great. So here in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, on this beautiful day, we thank you for joining us for our Grow ebook on. Talking Garden Trends. This is Susie McCoy saying, have a great day. Thank you. Bye, y'all. This is fun. Bye, y'all. <laughs>